Hi everyone, we've opened the topic of data unfolding in the last video. Today we are going to prepare a suitable formalism and we will have a look at the simplest unfolding method, the method of maximum likelihood. We will realize that it has important drawbacks and this will motivate next videos about more suitable methods. In the previous video we learned that there are two basic ways how a detector distorts a true PDF f sub true of y, finite resolution and finite acceptance. Due to these effects, the actual PDF from which the measured data is sampled is f of x is equal to 1 over n, a normalization factor, times integral dy, s of x given y, epsilon of y, f sub true of y. In the formula, y stands for the true value that happens in an event the true energy of an electron from a concrete beta decay, using the example from the last video. The symbol X stands for the observed energy, the output of our detector. S of X given Y is a resolution function and epsilon of Y is a reconstruction efficiency. A useful thing is to define a response function as a product of the resolution and efficiency functions. R of x given y is equal to s of x given y times epsilon of y. Most often, we don't have an analytical formula for the response function. Instead, the response function is encoded in a detector simulation and it is accessible just via a set of Monte Carlo events. Let's start with a mathematical formulation of the unfolding. We don't have any parameterization of the true PDF. We know nothing about it. However, we need to represent it by a finite set of parameters. Therefore, we bin it. P sub j is equal to integral over bin j dy f sub true of y. Obviously, P sub j is a probability for a true value y to fall into a bin j. Let's choose number of bins of the true distribution to be m. We also define mu sub j is equal to mu dot times pj, where mu dot is the expected total number of events. So, these are our true quantities. The observed data is a histogram with n bins. n can be different from the number of true bins m. In each bin of the observed histogram, there are n sub i events. Typically, n sub i is distributed according to a Poisson distribution. n sub i distributed according to a Poisson distribution of n sub i with a mean value nu sub i. We will use the symbol nu sub i to denote the expectation value of n sub i regardless of what the distribution is. For now, let's just assume we know the PDF for the observed histogram. Let's express the expectation values nu sub i in terms of the true quantities. Nu sub i is equal to mu dot times integral over bin i dx, integral over the entire range dy, r of x given y, f sub true of y. And this is equal to mu dot times integral over bin i dx times sum over j integral over bin j dy r of x given y f sub true of y and this is equal to the sum over j mu sub j times 1 over mu sub j over mu dot times integral over bin i dx integral over bin j dy r of x given y f sub true of y and this is all equal to the sum over j r i j times mu j here comes the key object for any unfolding method, the response matrix R sub ij. The meaning of its element R sub ij is the conditional probability for the observed value x to fall into the bin i if the true value y fell into the true bin j. Let's show it mathematically. R sub ij is equal to integral over bin i dx, integral over bin j dy, r of x given y, f sub true of y. And all this over integral over bin j dy, f sub true of y. 
and this is equal to probability for x to fall into bin i and y fall into bin j at the same time over the probability that y falls into bin j and this is equal to the probability that x falls into bin i given that y fell into bin j and this is clearly the conditional probability the unfortunate thing about the response matrix is that it depends on f sub true of y on the distribution that we want to determine with the unfolding procedure so this looks pretty much like the chicken and egg problem we need the pdf in order to measure it the key and unavoidable approximation in the unfolding procedure is the assumption that the response function is approximately constant in each bin j. Once this is true, the r sub ij doesn't depend on f sub true of y. Of course, we will have to assign the unfolding result a systematic uncertainty due to this assumption. The response matrix is, in fact, a two-dimensional histogram. Thus, it is ready to be estimated with Monte Carlo. You generate a true event, you propagate the outgoing particles through your detector, and you fill it in a bin ij, according to the true and observed energies y and x. Clearly, the Monte Carlo assumes some underlying true PDF, which is some good guess of f sub true of y. The normalization of the response matrix is the following. Sum over i r sub ij is equal to the integral over bin j dy integral dx s of x given y times epsilon of y times f sub true of y over integral over bin j dy f sub true of y and this is equal to some number epsilon sub j. The number epsilon j is an average reconstruction efficiency in the true bin j. If you fill the response matrix by running over Monte Carlo events, don't forget to normalize it in this way. Note that the sum, sum over j r i j, has no remarkable meaning. Note that the smearing and efficiency functions are, of course, independent of the true PDF for y. However, they might not be model independent, because y might not be the only variable that influences the probability to obtain a measured value x. Typically, angular variables influence the measured energy x, because different parts of the detector have different resolution and efficiency. Let's have a look at what effects are caused by the off-diagonal elements of the response matrix. In short, they are responsible for smearing any fine structures of the true PDF. A single peak is smeared, it is convoluted with the resolution function, simply it becomes wider. If there are two close-by peaks, they can be smeared into one. Up to now, we assumed there was just one source of events contributing to the observed histogram, the true electrons originating from the beta decay. However, there are also background events, like electrons from potassium-40 or from radioactive isotopes, impurities of the tested radioactive sample. Therefore, the expectation value of the observed histogram can be written as mu sub i is equal to a sum over j r sub i j mu sub j plus beta sub i, where beta sub i stands for the background events. So, we are done with the definition and a detailed discussion of the response matrix. It was worth investing our time into that, because the response matrix is the key and unavoidable input to all unfolding methods. Now, we are going to discuss unfolding with the maximum likelihood method. Let's recall that the result of our experiment is the observed histogram and vector and that we have to derive the response matrix somehow, with Monte Carlo events most often. If there is a background in our analysis, 
Then we also need to estimate the expected number of background events in each bin of the observed histogram. Unfolding then provides estimators for the expected number of true events in the individual bins of the true distribution. From now until the end of this video, let's assume that we split the true and the observed spectra into the same number of bins. In the nomenclature we've developed, n is equal to m. Let's recall that the expected number of observed events in a bin i is mu sub i is equal to sum over j r sub i j mu sub j plus beta sub i. Then mu sub j is equal to the sum over i inverse of r sub j i times mu sub i minus beta sub i. Now let's assume the most common situation that the PDF for the observed histogram is a product of Poisson PDFs. L of mu vector is equal to the product over i going from 1 to n Poisson distribution of n sub i given the mean value mu sub i of mu vector. Assumption of an n dimensional Gaussian PDF would work the same, but the product of Poissons is the most common. In this case, maximum likelihood estimators of mu sub j are mu sub j hat is equal to the sum over i inverse of r sub j i times n sub i minus beta sub i. Let's not calculate it here, it is clear anyway. Very simple answer from the maximum likelihood method. We just need to subtract background and invert the response matrix to get the desired estimators. Moreover, the maximum likelihood estimators are unbiased. The proof is simple. Let's just assume that the background estimation and the response matrix are known without errors. Then the expectation value of mu sub j hat is equal to the sum over i inverse of r sub j i times expectation value of n sub i minus beta sub i. And this is equal to the sum over i inverse of r sub j i times mu sub i minus beta sub i and this is equal to mu sub j. And even more, covariance of the estimators is at the RCF minimal bound for unbiased estimators. For the proof, look to the Glenn Coven's book Statistical Data Analysis. Here we just calculate the covariance. Covariance of mu sub i hat and mu sub j hat is equal to the sum over k and l inverse of r sub i k times inverse of r sub j l times the covariance of n sub k and n sub l which is itself equal to delta sub k l times nu sub k and all the expression is equal to the sum over k inverse of r sub i k times inverse of r sub j k times nu sub k. Note that the relation covariance of n sub k and n sub l is equal to delta sub k l times nu sub k doesn't hold in some rare cases. For example, it might not hold when the observed histogram is filled multiple times per event. This is the case, for example, of the inclusive jet spectrum. Anyway. So far, the maximum likelihood method looks very promising. Let's have a look at an example to see what its problem is. The example is taken from the Glenn Coven's book. At the top left, there's a hypothetical true histogram mu vector. At the top right, there are the expected values for the observed histogram, assuming there's no background. The response matrix used is based on a Gaussian resolution function with variance equal to 1.5 times the bin width. At the bottom left, there's the observed histogram. By eye, it looks very similar to the histogram of the expectation values, doesn't it? Finally, at the bottom right, there's the result of unfolding with the maximum likelihood method. The statistical uncertainties are huge, and we know they are the smallest possible one can get with a non-biased estimator. 
The reason for this catastrophic failure of the maximum likelihood method is the following. We don't have the expectation values for the observed histogram. We have just the fluctuated version, the data. The response matrix smears any fine structures and naturally its inverse is restoring them. Unfortunately, statistical fluctuations look pretty much like spikes and the inverse response matrix is sharpening spikes. In summary, maximum likelihood estimators mu vector hat is unbiased and efficient, it has the smallest possible variance for an unbiased estimator. This is the best thing one can get and we saw it wasn't sufficient. Therefore, the only way how to decrease variance is by introducing a bias. In the next videos you will learn a couple of methods that introduce a bias in order to reduce variance. In fact, unfolding can be viewed as a trade-off between variance and bias.